devices and institutions are increasingly being defined by their functions rather than their identities. For example, this sleek piece of hardware I have in my pocket does so many things that I used to have to carry around separately. It is my timer for when I'm giving talks at professional meetings. It's my newspaper when I'm stuck on the platform on Metro and I'm bored. It's my guide to cities when I want to make sure that I don't get lost or figure out where to eat. When I find that restaurant, it's my handy little seafood watch guide so I can make sure I'm ordering ecologically appropriate fish. And it's my calculator so that I calculate the tip on my bill appropriately and don't stiff the waiter. It's my calendar to make sure that I show up for that restaurant date on the right time. And if my date is late, it's my book so that I have something to read while I'm waiting. And to document this wonderful experience, it is both my video camera and my still camera. Check it out. Did you used to have one like this? And, and I like this best of all, it's not only a radio, it's also a flashlight. Eee. Now, that's gadgets. What about organizations? Well, right now, some of the most successful museums incorporate food, or music, or theater, or festivals, or even preschools. Some of the most successful libraries are incorporating exhibits and performances. So in the future, the single-purpose organization, like the single-purpose device, might be antiquated. And when you're thinking about planning your museum of the future, think about not what is a museum and what does it do, but what functionality do people want from us. And in this way, you can plan an organization that will be the indispensable piece of equipment they want to keep in their pocket.